Today we'll install the 2.2 kW spindle, try cutting some aluminum and even friction welding. In addition to what comes in the 2.2 kW spindle kit, we also need some distilled water, a bucket, an enclosure for the VFD, some antifreeze, a double shielded VFD cable and a 6x8 mm water hose since the included one is only 5 meters long. I always bench test these things before doing anything. This saves you so much hassle in the long run. I have rigged up a temporary setup here. Let's hope the smoke stays inside. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> The yeah, yeah, let the future me take over. The issue was I hooked up the earth to a phase input on the VFD. These VFDs can be either free phase or single phase, but the connection terminal is always free phase. And the earth has to be connected on the far right side where also the spindle earth is wired in. Since I am very eco friendly, I am repurposing this old PC case as a VFD enclosure. I transferred the holes where the power supply usually goes to a piece of paper, which I photographed and imported in Fusion 360. I tried to use a 3mm downcut bit to avoid tear out, but after the second broken bit I switched to a 3mm upcut bit, which got the job done. Repurposing an old PC case has also its perks, since they usually come with 12 volt fans. I transfer punched the VFD mounting holes to the bottom of the case, drilled and riveted four mounting points and installed the VFD. And since cable management differentiates man from animals, we also install it in rail. I have learned my lessons with the aeration connectors and for connecting the VFD to the main enclosure, we're gonna use some cable glands. For water cooling the spindle, you could add a radiator but I've got this huge plastic barrel almost for free, which will hold up to 50 liter of water. The main plug can be cut off since the water pump will be directly controlled via the VFD, so it only pumps when the spindle is running. If you don't plan on developing some kind of redneck biosphere for your science class, I would stick to distilled water as a cooling agent. But since this is kind of corrosive on its own, I'm adding a bottle of antifreeze. While he does the work, let's quickly have a look at the wiring diagram. The mains power from the existing cabinet gets wired directly to the RST input. It doesn't matter if you do RS or ST or RT. You only need to consider the earth PE is wired to the far right side where the spindle earth is also connected. Also don't forget to ground your electrical cabinet. The 12 volt from the power supply gets directly wired to the fans and the Modbus connection from the controller, in my case a Gribble hull board, gets directly wired to the RS- and RS- plus input on the VFD. The spindle cable gets wired to the U, V and W input and to the earth. Doesn't matter where you put U, V and W, when the spindle turns in the wrong direction just switch a pair. Now to the tricky part, the water pump. The neutral from the water pump is directly wired to the mains neutral. So you connect your phase from the main to the R input or to the S or to the E. And then you bridge it from there to the FB input. And then you take the FA input and wire it to the phase input on your water pump. The VFD will internally connect FA to FB when you switch on the spindle. So also the water pump is therefore switched on. The spindle grounding gets connected to ground. Those are the Modbus connections and here are the water pump connections FA and FB. 
To connect the VFD to the main cabinet, I've used two cables, one for the mains voltage and one Ethernet cable for the Modbus connection and the 12 volts for the fans. Me being fairly new to the CNC world, a 3D printed spindle holder saved me from breaking quite a few bits. But now it's time to get rid of the training wheels and slap a solid spindle clamp on there. I've also added a bunch of threaded holes on the side so I can later mount an indicator or a drag knife or a mist cooling system. Big boy. It may sound stupid, but soldiering the double shielded VFD cable to the connector was probably the hardest part in this build. The first time I've forgotten to slide the threaded back part onto the cable. After re-soldiering everything, the stranded wires and the solder tags were all messed up and the wire insulation was also quite damaged. So I recut the wire and re-soldiered everything. For the future I would probably buy a Harting connector. We also need to do some changes to the VFD software. To program it, press program. With the arrow keys, switch to the parameter you want to change. Press set, then change the parameter, press set again and you are done. These are the parameters I had to change to control the VFD via Modbus. Oh, the VFD is wired up, the pump is wired up. Now I press start and I hope nothing blows up. No smoke. That's good. Uh, switch the spindle to VFD spindle, not PWM. A short note from the other side, you also need to set your baud rate to 19,200, the minimum RPM to 6,000 and the max RPM to 24,000. And now if I put here 6,000, the spindle should start spinning and also the water down there should do something. Let's see. Okay, let's put it on clockwise. Okay, it's in the other direction. Oh, water is... Oops, water is coming out of here. Well, now it's probably a good time to connect the water hoses. And to fix the spindle polarity, you can just switch two spindle wires on the VFD. The VFD is wired up, the water pump also. Now we need to start the spindle and hope nothing leaks. 6000 RPM and press, st press start. This should pump the fluid. Well, okay. Let's see if we... Okay, fluid is coming. It's going back. Oh, it looks good. Nothing is leaking. As it seems. And down there. Huh? Also looks good. Well, nice. With everything working now, it's probably a good idea to try out some aluminum and start breaking stuff again. We've got a chunk of aluminum clamped in the device. Let's see what happens. Surface finish leaves to be desired. Now I know why. We've got this fucked up surface finish. Surface looks very rough. I've now tightened up the face plates here and we'll give it another try with one millimeter depth of cut. Definitely looks better. 
After seeing the 2mm depth of cut also working fine, I got a little cocky. So I surfaced the top, I contoured the sides and also did a 0.1mm pass on the bottom to get a nice and shiny finish. Let's chamfer this bad boy. Ah, oh, fucked up. Ah, oh, fucked up. <laughs> Shit. Well, well, well. Something with the offset didn't work out. <laughs> well, I blew up both 10 amp fuses and the uh, chamfering end mill is now stuck in there. Let's call him Excalibur.